Hi, my name is Cameron Peebles, and for this year's extravaganza, um, I did a thrust experiment uh, with a balloon. And so, for this experiment, all you're going to need, if you want to do this at home, is a balloon, fishing line, a straw, and some tape. Um, and then, once you have everything, you're going to take your fishing line and attach it to the backs of two chairs, just like this. Um, and so that will create a tightrope almost for the straw that you're going to put, you're going to put one of this, or part of this, or the string through the straw, um, so that it can freely move across from chair to chair. Um, and then, and then you're going to blow up a balloon, but you're not going to tie it off yet. You're just going to hold it closed with your fingers and then take some tape and tape the balloon to the straw, however you like. Um, but keep holding the balloon closed. And then once you're all ready, you're going to let go of the balloon and the balloon is going to propel itself forward um, using thrust and the compressed air. Um, and so here's a video of it. And then for that, um, so as, as you can see, it just went straight across the line. And it does that because the string and the straw is holding it there and it can't move anywhere else. If that string, if that string wasn't there, the balloon would just go however it wanted to and it would be uncontrollable. But since that string and the straw is attaching the chair, the balloon has to stay on that certain path. It might swirl around a little bit, but it will go along that path every single time. And then, um, here it is in slow motion. So here's just another way to see it. See how it, it, it keeps going in circles, but it's still staying along that line. And so what's happening here is the thrust is, or the compressed air is pushing the balloon backwards. And it's, when, when you blow up a balloon, the balloon is originally pretty small. And then when you blow it up, it becomes very big. And that's because of the air. And all the balloon wants to do is go back to that original size. And so when you keep it from doing that, the air just sits there waiting to come out. And so the air, once you finally let go of it, it only has one place to go. And that's out of a pretty small hole. Um, and it pushes a lot of air out at one time. Um, and so when lots of air is being pushed through one small hole, it creates thrust going the other way. And thrust propels the balloon across the line at a pretty fast pace. And <clears throat> so that is what made the balloon go from one side to the other pretty quickly. And, um, and it will keep going until it either runs out of air in the balloon, um, runs out of string like it did between the two chairs, or according to Newton's first law, um, an object will an object will stay in motion. An object will remain at rest or keep moving in a straight line at a constant speed unless it is acted upon by a force. And this could be air resistance an object stopping it, or even the gust of wind that throws it off the track. Really, just anything. And so, as you can see on the bottom right, when gas is pushed through the hole, um, thrust gets generated and pushes the balloon the opposite way. And thrust also applies to 
um, rockets because rockets need thrust to push through the air and they burn a lot of fuel and push a lot of air down so that forces a lot of or that creates a lot of thrust pushing the rocket up it's kind of a no um, easy way to say it but if the um, thrust and the acceleration were at a constant um, and there was no interference the rocket would go forever um, and so that is kind of how thrust works and how we can apply that to um, balloons so